Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. <clears throat> TB Photo X 1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, I've stated in a couple of uh, previous installments that I was going to do a little bit of a review of the Aqualong 140 uh, I450T, excuse me, digital uh, dive computer. <clears throat> well, here it is then. Uh, and uh, I think that now uh, I've done, we, we did four, uh, no, we did the five outdoor dives for the certification process uh, and a couple of pool dives before that. Uh, and uh, I've used this computer then a couple of times in the pool and outside. Um, Keep in mind also, if you follow the Facebook link in the description, you will see some of the video footage shot by the dive teacher, who actually, yeah, and actually I, you can see that I then have two dive computers on my left wrist. It is the Aqualung i450T and a Sunto Zoop, which is Z-U-Z-O-O-P which is a little bit of an older style computer. The reason was we wanted to compare because all of the students in this scuba class uh, were given uh, Sunto computers to borrow during the training dives. So I actually used them too, my own and the borrowed one, which also gave, gave me a little bit of the opportunity to compare them, or at least these two, brands and uh, makes and models uh, in order to get a little bit of a feel for it but uh, yeah now I'm, I think I have a little bit of a of a, you know experience with the i450t so I can give it a little bit of a review or at least my opinions on it well first of all uh, this computer is uh, sh the same size and shape as a ordinary average digital watch um, so it can be worn if you please, if you choose, uh, every day as your everyday carry wristwatch. And as a wristwatch, it actually, if you press the, well, first of all, the overview of it, uh, it has four buttons on it. Uh, on the top left hand side, you have the mode button. T uh, bottom left side, you have the, what is it called now again, ADV button. On the right hand side, top right, is the select button, and the lower right hand side is the light button, which uh, gives the, which turns on the backlight of the dive computer. Well, if you are in the watch mode, which is the default mode if you're not using it, using it uh, in the water, you can press the mode button one quick time and you go get go into the watch menu and that's basically you have a chronographer and chronograph excuse me and some other fairly standard digital watch uh, functions such as um, setting an alarm and so on well if we go back then to the main watch so uh, yeah if we go, how do you put it over to dive mode? Well, you push the mode button and you hold it in for about two seconds and it will switch over to the dive mode or rather the dive computer mode. A little bit of, uh, you know, uh, features of this before we continue the review. This dive computer has, among other features, a built-in compass, it has built-in air integration, it has the built-in ability to be use, used with both uh, air and with uh, nitrox. So if you're a nitrox certified diver, you're able to use this computer to calculate a nitrox dive. Also, since it has air integration, it also so it can pair with one of these, the Aqualung the sender units that is screwed into the high pressure port of your regulator first stage. So when I have gotten, if you look at my previous video about the overview of my Poseidon jet stream regulator set, uh, I would say that if I get that little, ex uh, that little hose for the high pressure port so I can fit this unit, uh, I can probably do a update review in the future with me using the 
center unit and how it works compared to underwater pressure gauge. So immersible pressure gauge, I should, pro should probably say. But anyway, also, this computer has the ability to, to, in to interface with up to three different sender units so if you're in more of a technic if you're more into technical diving potentially you can use this dive computer to sync up with up to three different uh, air tanks so filled with different uh, mixture different gas mixtures so basically <clears throat> When, and also this computer has three operating modes. It is the dive mode, which is the subject for this review, gauge mode, which I don't really use, and uh, free diving, which I don't use either. I bought this uh, primarily as a dive computer. Well, now we're in the dive computer mode. If you press the select button and hold that one in for two seconds, the computer will switch over to a digital compass mode. So in, in the digital compass mode, you can have, it has a little subset of menus where you can calibrate, you put it in a reference mode, standard mode, and so on. So, and set declination for magnetic uh, declination. Compass can actually then be used, so it will, you'll be able to set a reference point and the compass will point to the reference point during the dive. So that's a little bit of a nice little feature for this, this uh, dive computer that it has a built-in compass. But uh, yeah, I also have a compass on my console. So this is, it is a great little backup to have as a, in a dive computer format as such. But uh, yeah, there is a whole different, whole slew of different small features in this dive computer and a built-in compass is a really neat little trick to have in it. Also if we look at the home screen now when we're above the water uh, on the top left hand corner of the screen you have the the signal strength for from the dive computer to the sender units for air pressure uh, underneath that you have a split screen with surface time, dive mode, and then on the bottom you have the bar because this computer can both be set into imperial and metric units of measure. And since I'm Swedish we're using the metric model in this one. So it is in bar and now it's currently flashing double zero because uh, it isn't hooked up. To the sender unit is still transmitting to the dive computer but since it's not connected to any tank and, under, and it's not under any load pressure, uh, it will show double zero. And on the right hand side, now on the surface, it also says air because I've put this into air since I'm not Nitrox certified yet. Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit it. If you press the ADV button, you can actually then toggle a couple of sub uh, number of pages so first you had the main dive computer page, then you have the rest of the information, which is maximum depth, uh, last dive time, dive time, uh, and uh, I think also you can get uh, the uh, temperature when you're on an actual dive. It's a little bit different between uh, when the dive computer is on the surface and when it's actually on the water. So yeah, but anyway, you have also then the menu for the dive computer, and we have a couple of items to go through here in the dive computer menu uh, let's see first you have the flight uh, counter which means that uh, when you have done a dive and you have excess nitrogen in your body uh, the computer will actually do a hypothetical time that you need to wait until uh, you can fly safely after a dive which is a handy feature so yeah, we have uh, the fly, uh, the, the no fly time timer. Then you have plan mode. This is what actually re replaces the old school dive tables. When you put it into plan mode, you press the select button and you get into a sub menu where you will actually uh, be able to plan a dive to a maximum depth. If I had do done uh, previous dives and so on, with the computer, it will actually take into account the potentially acquired nitrogen 
uh, excess in the body and it will actually give you a no deco limit. But if we just scroll through it, uh, the shallowest depth you can do is 9 meters. And I think that this will actually, I'm just toggling through here, and it will go to 57 meters. So the deepest this computer can give you a potential dive plan is to 57 meters of depth. Not that I am planning to go that deep anytime soon, but it's hand nice to know that uh, the computer is able to go that deep. After the plan mode, we have the logbook which is basically the computer's uh, ability to log every dive that you have done with it. And it will be known with the time, date, and the dive number of that day. So if you take the final dive that we did, for instance, and you push select, you will get some general information about that dive, that the maximum depth in that particular instance was 15.4 meters. The surface time previous was two hours and 12 minutes and the actual dive time was 35 minutes. And then we have the first, here we actually see the first little negative I have about this computer, because in the extreme right and the extreme left uh, of the display, you have two staple diagrams that will actually show you on the left side. It is like in, a, if you're any way interested in aviation, you know that an aircraft has to have the standard six pack of the instruments represented and one of those is the the uh, rate of ascent and descent meter and you have something similar in di most dive computers and on this one you basically have a two staple diagrams on the left side it is rate of ascent and descent and the problem i have with this one is that the outer edge of the display is black in itself and the staple is also black, so you have no contrasting color in between each other. And uh, it is a fairly thin staple diagram. And if you have any little piece of fogging of your dive mask, you will have problems seeing this staple diagram. And on the left side, you have the same, but that's for the potentially uh, acquired uh, nitrogen excess in your body. So those two staples are a little bit, you know, hard to read on the water with a little bit of fog on your, in your mask, dive masks and so on. So that's my only little pure negative about this dive computer. So if we go back then after logbook, we have set gas, which uh, gives us the ability to choose one of the three center units that we have available to us. I only have one, but uh, as stated, the computer is able to sync up with three center units. And you'll actually be able to cho choose which gas mixture you have to each center unit. And of course, for this one, I have the number one unit set, which is set to the code, numerical code for this center unit. And as I've been reading up on this computer it turns out that a bit of a feature for the aqualung series of computer with air integration is that they pair for life with their center units which means that uh, even if i go away from the dive from the center unit with the dive computer far enough so it will lose connection uh, as soon as i get it within range again they will reconnect automatically i don't have to do that manually so that's a little bit of a good feature, in my opinion. After the ga set gas, you have set alarms. And we have a couple of alarms here that can be very interesting. For instance, you have an audible alarm. Uh, if I just turn that off and I'm going to turn it on again, you might be able to hear it here. That little beep you hear is the audio signal from the dive computer itself that will actually uh, warn you that one of your alarms or some other setting uh, has gone off. So you both have the audio, but you also have a visual because right at the bottom here, you have a little bit of a clearish, opaque, clearish, whitish little dot, which is actually an LED. I noticed that when this has an alarm that goes off, that LED starts to flash red. 
So you have the audible alarm, you have a depth alarm, which is that if you set that you're not going to go below a certain depth, you can actually set that in the dive computer. And for this instance, I have it set to 15 meters. Then you have the EDT alarm, which I don't really know what it stands for, unfortunately. But I've had it set to 20 minutes because it goes off after 20 minutes. And that means that we were through with half the dive uh, when we did our uh, oh, our yeah when we did our training final training dives we said that we were gonna go out 20 minutes and then back 20 minutes and our total dive time was calculated to be 40 minutes but anyway n2 or a all a l which is uh, nitrogen accumulation alarm you can actually set uh, that when the computer has calculated a potential uh, nitrogen accumulation it will actually set off an alarm which is a handy feature even though that's something you should have an eye on uh, of your own but then you have the DTR alarm which I also set to 20 minutes the turn alarm uh, turn alarm is a little bit different from uh, the other alarms that it doesn't work with time it actually works with pressure so if you've set that if you have for instance, you say that uh, uh, if you have a 300 bar uh, dive tank and you say that, okay, uh, we're gonna do, we need to inform each other if we have half tank remaining, I can set this actually to the turn alarm, I can set to 150 bars and it will, an alarm will go off when I have 150 bars remaining. But that, also, that alarm will only work then if I have the sender unit and it coupled with the dive computer. Then we have a pressure alarm, which is basically if I am getting dangerously low on air pressure, so I can set that to, I have it set to 55 bars because I want to be aware of it slightly before I reach 50, because 50 bars is the absolute minimum you should really terminate your dive if you have less than 50, 50 bars or below of air left in your tank. So that's a little bit of a good feature to have as well in my opinion. And that's the gist of the alarms that you can have on this computer. Let's see here what we have then after alarms. You have utilities. And on the utilities you can set the water type which can be either fresh water or salt water. Since I live in Sweden, most of our lakes are freshwater lakes and even the Baltic Sea is a low salinity ocean. So that means that um, I have it set defaultly on freshwater. Then you have H2 active, which means that the computer will actually start when it gets uh, submerged. Then you have units, which means that you can change between the imperial or metric modes of measurement. For the metric crowd, we are using meters, bars, and Celsius, while the imperial mode is feet, psi, and Fahrenheit. But since this is Sweden, Europe, we're using uh, Celsius and meters and bars, so that's what I have mine set to. Then on the utilities, it's a little bit strange that we have this on the utilities and not under alarms, in my opinion. But apparently there is uh, a, some thought behind it. We have depth stop and we have safety stop. And safety stop is basically when we have been down under 10 meters, the dive computer will automatically go over to a safety stop. Which means that if when we go up to 5 meters, the dive computer will urge us to stay at 5 meters for a preset amount of time. And the fairly standard interval is 5 meters at 3, meet at three minutes. So that's a safety stop. So it's a little bit strange that it's under utilities and not under alerts or alarms. Conserved, I don't really know what that does. Light duration, how long the backlighting of the watch dive computer is. But then you have an, something that doesn't really, on the utilities, you have something that doesn't really uh, interact with the dive computer directly, but actually indirectly if you use the software, because this computer is 
USB compatible, so you have a USB cable that you can put into your computer and you can download the dive information until onto a Aqualon software. There is both the sample version that I have, or you can have the professional ver version, which you have to pay for. Uh, you have sampling, sampling, and sampling is basically the sample rate, because the computer will actually store uh, all the parameters it can uh, measure, and you can actually change how frequently uh, the computer will sample all of its measurable uh, measurable uh, units so to speak so you can have it either on two any uh, from 2 15 30 and 60 seconds so that means that the computer will give sample all the parameters once every 2 to 60 uh, seconds and since I'm one of those that wants a very detailed history on how the dive went, I have mine set to uh, one sample every two seconds. That's just me. Uh, TMT menu, let's see what that is. Well, that's basically the three different uh, uh, tank center units, uh, since every center unit has a unique uh, set of numbers that you need to program into the dive computer in order for it to sync with the sender unit. You, under the TMT menu, you have the ability to write in those numbers. Let's see what we have more here. Uh, yeah, uh, utilities we were at. Yeah, TMT menu, that was the last one. And uh, what do we have after utilities? We have the operating mode. And this computer, as stated, has a total of three operating modes. Dive mode, which is the primarily one I use. Gauge mode, which is basically a dive mode light. Uh, it doesn't have all the features, all the bells and whistles that the dive mode has. And then you have a free mode, which is free diving, which was apparently what the previous owner of this dive computer used it for. History, it's basically your accumulated amount of dives and the total amount of dive time you have registered in the computer. So yeah, that's a little bit uh, uh, interesting. So, and um, what's the uh, after history? And finally you have battery TMT, which means that when you press it, it will do a check of the battery. And uh, in this case, i450T, bat good which means that we have a good battery in the computer. So that's... Uh, so basically that's uh, the... After five dives with the Aqualong i450T, um, without using the airing integration part, uh, I have started to notice that it's a very good little dive computer to have. Uh, the only two real drawbacks I've, set, uh, I've, I've found with it is, first of all, it is the, uh, <clears throat> the hard to read ascend, descend, and N2 gauges uh, on the far extreme left and extreme right of the dive display, which are they're a little bit uh, hard to see underwater with a little bit of fog in your mask and so on. And the second is that the backlight could have been a little bit stronger, uh, in my opinion, to make it easier to read in a darker environment. I know that there are other dive computers that have fluorescent backlight screens and so on, and that even have screens that become glow in the dark um, after you have shone a flashlight on it or something like that, but unfortunately this one doesn't. That said, I think it's a very great dive computer as a first timer. Uh, compared to the Sunto line that I had a little bit of experience with compared to this one, well, the Sunto is a little bit easier to read because it's bigger, but also in that it's a little bit more bulky. This one, the i450T, it's uh, slimmer, more elegant in its design, and uh, I think it was a very, very good dive computer for the money. I bought it used, uh, it is still available new to my knowledge, and uh, it is a bit future-proven because, future-proof I should say, with it that it has air integration, all the bells and whistles. 
So all in all, would I recommend this uh, to someone, uh, the first time, uh, first time dive computer buyer? Yes, of course I would, because it has served me great. I am a newbie diver and so on. Uh, one thing that you can either have hit or miss. When I compared the Arcolong to the Sunto when I was diving, uh, the Sunto was three, 30 centimeters shallower and the Aqualung was 30 centimeters deeper, three decimeters deeper than the Sunto. Yeah, that can be a pro or a con. It can be a con in that it, you don't really know. It can be a calibration issue or something like that. But also, I think it's a pro because you're actually, it is showing that you're deeper than you actually are, maybe, if the Sunto is correct and this is the wrong way around or the other way around, that the this is correct and the Sunto is too shallow. Yeah, 30 centimeters, okay, yeah, give or take. But um, all in all, a really good dive computer in my opinion, easy to handle. After you have read the manual and so on, it is quite logically built up. Um, that it has it has a little bit of a smaller screen, makes it so that you have several pages. So you have to flip through some pages to get to your relevant information and so on. But uh, yeah, it works. It is uh, quite decent priced, competitively priced I should say. It's future proven with uh, air integration. It can handle both the air and nitrox and so on. Only, as stated, only two negatives I find with it. A little bit um, uh, of a weak backlight system and a little bit hard to read. Uh, ascend and descent uh, di uh, staple and a little bit hard to read. Uh, uh, nitrogen uh, accumulation staple. So those two are the only negatives that I found with it. Good audible alerts, many different types of alarms that you can set both audio and visual with the LED. So yeah, there is a lot of pros for this little computer that I would really recommend to anybody who's interested in getting their first dive computer. The only thing you should know about it is that it has a little bit of a small text and so on, but the must know information is actually fairly easy to read on it, in my opinion. So yeah, I think that's all for me for now, and as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I would rather want to know your information or your experience with this dive computer, if you have it, and uh, if you have any other dive computer that you think is a better or worse alternative, preferably better. Uh, I would like to hear your thoughts and uh, examples in the comment section below. So yeah, I think that's all for me for now and take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.